Hi guys, welcome. Today I'm going to follow up on my last project of creating yard art. This time, instead of making a piece, I'm going to show you how I created the file to make this piece. Now unfortunately, I have all the artistic skill of an ape with a paintbrush. Fortunately, there's an easier way. If you do a search of the internet, you'll find plenty of public domain, clip art and colouring book pages that are just ideal for creating this type of yard art. So sit back and watch as I create the toolpaths for the Santa with Toys project. To create our yard art, the first thing I had to do was create the file. I set up a work area of 700 by 700 and I imported a picture that I downloaded off the internet. This one is a public domain one. Now what you're looking for when selecting a picture is something with well-defined areas like the black is on this particular picture. The best ones to find if you can are colouring pages because they're just black and white and are very very easy to convert to tool parts. This one here won't be too bad. It's got a couple of problem areas particularly around the hair will be my biggest issue. But other than that this is going to look pretty good. Select the bitmap and come over here to fit vectors to bitmap and I'm just going to select the black. I'm just going to leave it as a loose corner fitting and couple of pictures, pixels, you can see it doesn't make much difference on this particular picture. Fit vectors and close. Now here's where I said I was going to have trouble with the hair and as you can see I wasn't lying so I'm just going to select what it tried to create and I'm going to go through and create my own using draw curve. So I'm just going to start here and just lay out this line around here like so. You don't need to worry too much, you can always go back later and fit it better to the curb if anything's out of position. But I'm just going to make plenty of just going to click plenty of times as I go around here and it should follow the curve pretty well. Again, I'm just doing this quickly so for demonstration purposes. And there it is, completed. That doesn't look too bad, but what I can do is I can select it and go in, and I can move any nodes around that I feel need to be moved to make it that little bit more accurate, especially if I've got something that's completely out of the way. But that looks pretty good, I'm not going to worry too much about it. What I can do now is I can go over here to bitmap layer turn it off and reselect layer 1 and there's my drawing there now the last thing you want on it is little tiny circles like this here because all little, the cutter will do is just create you a heap of little holes they'll be quite annoying to paint so just select them like so and small ones like that on something like this you don't really need them now I'll keep the shiny bit for the shoes here but that looks like about it. Now I need to size it to my table size. My table 700 wide. I'm going to size this here along the X to 680. That leaves me 10 millimeters either side when I'm machining it. And I'll also center it on my material. And there we have it. 
we're now ready to create the toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our pocketed areas. By going Control A, I can select all of the vector, and then holding down the Shift key, I can deselect the outside of it. I'll now select Pocket, and I'm going to use a quarter inch bit, or 6.35 millimeters, and I'm going to be pocketing this 3.5 millimeters deep. If I was going to go thicker than half inch, or 12 millimeter, I'd go as deep as 4 millimeters, maybe a little bit deeper, but 3.5 would be the minimum depth I use, otherwise painting it becomes that little bit more difficult. So I'm going to edit this here and just make sure that my quarter inch bit can go down the full, I'll make it 4 millimeters, you can go the full 3.5 millimeters to cut it all in one hit, and we'll just calculate that. Okay, now just looking at this here I can see a problem area here where this bit here should be one piece and it's not so I'm just going to select that node edit and I'll just pull that up into there toolpath recalculate all toolpaths there we are and I can see now it connects up and I believe everywhere else on this here looks pretty good if it doesn't you need to go through and modify it slightly until everything looks like it will cut properly. So we can go to our 3D view here and we can preview that toolpath. And I'm just going to set the toolpath color of white, which will make it a lot easier to see. We'll come back here sand, uh, to our drawing again. We're going to select the outside this time and we're going to profile it. Again I'm going to use my quarter inch bit, I'm going to go the full 12 millimeters deep. I'm going to cut two millimeters each pass and I'll just calculate that. Preview toolpath, if you wish to add tabs around it, this would be the time to do it. In fact we'll do that. I'm going to add, add tabs and we'll just stick edit tabs and we need to manually click them around I'll just add a I'll add 15 tabs around the outside there and just keep an eye on it. anything that ends up in the center of somewhere that's going to be a real sod to get at just slide along to somewhere where it's going to be easy to get at like so, those, those are fine you don't want one in a corner like there, just move it along slightly and there we have it, that's that's good plenty of tabs I'm going to make them 10 millimeters wide and 1 millimeter high, that should be more than enough to hold it so we'll calculate that reset preview and preview all the toolpaths again and there we are, we can see our holding tabs on there now even though we're using the same cutter to cut the pockets and the profile around it we really need to make sure we give these different numbers I'm going to make the first one cutter 1 and I'll make the second one cutter 2 which it is the reason for that is when it comes time to cut the profile, the pocket, sorry, we need to set the cutter to the surface of the material. When it comes time to profile it, we need to set the cutter to the table. If we have the same tool number, we will not be asked to change tool and we won't get the opportunity to reset the cutter. Now that's fine if you want to set the cutter correctly to do the whole thing in one hit that's fine um, if I was going to do that I'd just set it to the table top uh, call it 12 mm, uh, minus 12 millimeters to suit the material size and away I'd go but I prefer personally to do the pockets and then come back reset the cutter and do the final cutout so now we can just go save toolpath Select our tools, 
Save toolpath. Call it Santa with gifts. And with gifts. And save. And that's basically all there is to it. Well, I hope that's been useful to you. And you'll now be able to go out and create your own yard art to reflect your own personal tastes. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. If you haven't already done so, please consider following me on YouTube and Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers!